My name is Terry, and I fell in love with the most dangerous patient in the psychiatric hospital. How did it happen? Well, I went to work with my mom for the first time. Her chief physician allowed me to stay there while I waited for my mom to finish work. Rosie, as she asked to be called, was very nice to us. She even gave me a gift, a red jacket. It looked really good on me, and since the building was chilly, I wore it with pleasure. My mom worked there as a dentist, and I went to her office for one of her treatments, where I met my crush. I fell in love with him instantly. He wasn't talkative at all, but he caught my attention so strongly. He had a jacket on similar to mine, the same red color. It seemed like a sign. He walked in with a hood, and I repeatedly went after him to get his attention. Mom said she knew nothing about him, not even his name. Rosie just asked him to be treated there. I tried to find his medical card, but I couldn't. Strange. My mom didn't know his name either, saying that he was rarely seen. Everyone just called him Red because of his jacket. Later, I got to know him better, and I immediately regretted it. That day, my mom needed to leave for errands, so I stayed in her office and fell asleep. I woke up with a strange feeling. I opened my eyes and found Red frozen over me, staring at my face. I was scared and screamed in surprise, and when I rubbed my eyes, he was gone. I was in horror. Did he already start to appear in my dreams? I took out my phone to call my mom, but it was turned off. Then I went to the chief physician's office, but she wasn't there either. Suddenly, I had the idea to look for his card in there. It would be interesting to find out something about him, but I found nothing. Then, when I turned around, I saw him next to me with an object in his hand. It looked like a knife. I screamed and pushed a chair at him, running into the corridor and taking the elevator down to the first floor. When the doors opened, I saw him there again. I pushed him with all my strength and ran out onto the street. Seeing my mom's car there, I was very happy, but she wasn't inside. My phone was still turned off. My hands were shaking and I didn't know what to do or how to hide from him. What does he want from me? I noticed Red approaching again, and I ran inside the building and through another section to find a landline phone to call the police. There was no security around. I felt like we were all alone in this building. I was so scared that I couldn't think straight, and I ran slowly, my legs feeling weak. Red continued to chase me. The only way I could think of to protect myself was to knock him out. So, I found a stick and waited for him around the corner before hitting him over the head. Ouch! Terry, what are you doing? Rosie? Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I didn't mean to. It was all Red. Who's Red? The patient my mom treats for his teeth? What are you talking about, Terry? We don't have such a patient. Are you kidding? He even has a red jacket just like mine, which you gave me. There were unfamiliar people in white coats standing next to Rosie. The head doctor whispered something in their ears, and they put a straight jacket on me and taped my mouth shut. My struggles were useless. I was just waiting for my mom to come and save me. They took me to another room, and after an injection, I couldn't move. My mother came in crying, and I couldn't even talk to her. The head doctor said, She has a disorder, signs of schizophrenia and persecution mania. It's all on video. She ran away from someone who wasn't there. In one of the videos, she's holding a knife while wearing a red hoodie. We'll observe her here for a while. I'm so sorry. I was indeed in the videos, sometimes with red, and we were both wearing hoodies. The videos were edited to make it look like the same person. But who would do this? I couldn't even speak, let alone explain, because of their medication. My mother cried and left, and I stayed in that room, not believing my ears. Was all of this really happening? The nurses left, and I was alone. My eyes fell on a small, soft shelf with my clothes on it, and among them was a tightly rolled red jacket. It's been a month since I saw my mom last. Then I was invited to Rosie's office for an exam. While she wasn't there, I got up and approached her desk, looking for a phone to call my mom. But when I heard footsteps in the doorway, I quickly moved away from the table, hitting the photo frame and breaking it. Then I picked up the fallen photo and saw a familiar face of a boy in the picture. He reminded me of someone. Then I saw the red jacket on him. Was he her son? Right then and there, Rosie gave me some kind of shot that made me feel like a vegetable. She told me, You were sent to save my son. I'm sorry, I couldn't get him out of here with his diagnosis. I had to switch you. So it turns out that I became an easy target. I fell in love with a fool and was taken advantage of. Beware of psychos, or else you'll end up like me.
Imagine a date that is worth moving mountains for girls and a guy for whom your heart is ready to beat twice as fast. And it was you who had the chance to drive him crazy, but you missed your effing chance. Hi everyone, I'm Helga, and I'll tell you how long it took to get my dream date, only to ruin it later. My crush appeared at school, handsome Jay, tall, rich, smart, and divinely handsome. He arranged a kind of charity raffle. The point was to raise money to repair the shelter for homeless animals. The prize for the winner was a romantic evening with Jay and Monique. Well, they're like the two most popular people at school. To participate, all you had to do was pay a $300 deposit, write your name on the piece of paper, and wait to be drawn. It was a lot of money, but the shelter needed a major overhaul. I borrowed some money from a friend, and Jay pulled out my name. I couldn't believe it. I just had to go on that date. The whole school envied me. While I was trying to empty my little sister Emmy's piggy bank, she stood behind me. Her coughing caused me to drop the china pig on the floor, and I was terribly ashamed. She was a smart child beyond her years. She immediately advised how easy it is to make big money. There were several paid social experiments in our city, and I decided to participate in each one of them in order to earn not only my contribution, but also a Gucci dress. It would fit me perfectly. I had all of two days. First, I went to a new establishment where we were blindfolded and allowed to taste an incomprehensible, semi-cold, mushy liquid. I didn't understand what the point was, stuffing the tenth portion into myself. We were spoon-fed and remained silent. There were different tastes, potatoes with lemon, zucchini with onions, pumpkin with milk, and something else. I was almost nauseous and opened my mouth to spit out the sock-flavored puree, but I was beaten to it. Some guy shouted, Damn, shit is more pleasant than your mashed potatoes. Got up and left. Hooray! I was paid $200 and almost green. I came out of there and ran right away to the next experiment, where I had to starve. It won't bother me, I thought, but it did. For the next 10 hours, I lay on my side in a half-empty room with bare walls. A nurse walked around me, took urine for analysis, measured my blood pressure. In addition, a tube was inserted into my stomach through my throat, preventing me from breathing normally. After two hours, I asked to be allowed to watch at least TV, and they turned on the boring news because I wasn't even supposed to see food. The essence of the experiment wasn't really that clear to me. After a long couple of hours, they pulled out the tube. I already thought that everything was finally free, but I was allowed to go to the toilet and asked to come back. It was almost impossible to sleep, although I terribly wanted to. I was majorly tired. I just counted up to one trillion and then reversed it many times. I wanted to give up, but I was lucky that my neighbor in the other room protested and pulled the pipe out of her mouth. I was handed $900 and I walked out. Above all, at that moment, I wanted to go home and go to bed, but another experiment awaited me, in which I had to take $1,200 and buy myself a dress and repay the debt. I entered a dimly lit room, sat down in an armchair, and board games were placed in front of me. Sudoku, crossword, chess, backgammon, and cards. I had to play and solve at least two tasks several times and not fall asleep. The fewer mistakes, the closer the victory. That experiment lasted 20 hours. That is, at the end I had to buy a dress, get ready, and immediately go to the restaurant. The first two hours were even fun despite being tired, and then I solved the Sudoku and crossword puzzles not so fast. After six hours, the games were changed for us, and I took the tablet to pop bubbles of the same color. It seemed to me that something colored would distract and wake me up, but I was wrong. We were closely watched, and I just imagined my date with Jay. What would I have at dinner? What would I tell him? Would I confess my feelings? What would we talk about? What if he kissed me? Wow. We have a winner. I sharply heard someone's voice in front of me. Did I do it? I won? I hadn't slept in almost two days. Yes, yes! From the sharp adrenaline rush, I took my money and ran to the store for the dress. But there, a surprise awaited me. It was worn by another girl. I looked at myself in the mirror, disheveled with bright red eyes, barely able to stand on my feet. Like a robot, I resolutely followed her to the fitting room and took off my dress from her by force. Then I threw the money at the checkout and changed. You can't even imagine what I went through for this! I shouted at the end, got into a taxi, and arrived at the restaurant.
Where is Jay? I asked myself, sitting down at the table, and then he came in, like from the cover of a fashion magazine. Jay sat down at the table, looked at me, and I almost said, I love you, and he said, Good morning, Helga. You didn't pass the experiment. I'm really sorry. What? Jay, what are you talking about? What kind of- Helga, open your eyes. Time is up. What time is up? We just arrived. Jay's voice got louder, and then it sounded like a woman's. Helga! He shouted in this auntie's voice, and I opened my eyes. What? What was happening? I was lying in a room, hugging the tablet. It was daylight outside the window, and other participants were nearby. Yes, I dreamed it. Nobody won that experiment. My tears of disappointment are hard to describe. No! I screamed, realizing that not only was I left without a dress, I'd also slept through my dream date. However, when I arrived at school, another surprise awaited me. Rumors about charity reached the principal, and he began to find out for which shelter they were raising funds. It turned out there was no such shelter. Jay and Monique got caught in a petty scam. So basically, my date wouldn't have happened anyway. All good wishes to you guys, and remember, never make money at your own detriment.